Uh, I want to thank Sages for the opportunity to present today. We have nothing to disclose. Esophagectomy remains uh, the cornerstone of the treatment paradigm for the management of both early stage and locally advanced esophageal cancer. Um, unfortunately, it continues to be plagued by high rates of morbidity and mortality. Since the advent of minimally invasive techniques in the early 1990s, um, it has been found to have uh, improved short-term outcomes to open surgery as well as uh, oncologic equivalents. Over the last 25 years, surgical techniques have progressed, and there exist many options for minimally invasive esophagectomy. A transhiatal approach, um, completely laparoscopic with the cervical anastomosis, um, and then the two transthoracic options, a McEwen or a three-hole technique with both thoracoscopic and laparoscopic op um, parts with a cervical esophagogastrostomy, and an Ivor Lewis approach with laparoscopic and thoracoscopic um, surgery with an intrathoracic anastomosis. Traditionally, at our institution, we had favored uh, a three-hole approach, but over the last several years, we have adjusted techniques. Um, this is for several reasons. Uh, the changing epidemiology of esophageal cancer in the United States over the last three decades with higher rates of adenocarcinoma and more lower esophageal tumors, um, high rates of morbidity with a cervical incision, including uh, recurrent laryngeal nerve injury, as well as swallowing dysfunction, even in the absence of nerve injury, as well as surgeon preference. So uh, we aim to compare minimally invasive Ivor Lewis and three-hole esophagectomies with a hypothesis that minimally invasive Ivor Lewis um, resections are less morbid in the perioperative setting. We retrospectively um, reviewed our prospective database over a five-year span from 2011-2016. Uh, upon review of our database, we had 49 patients who underwent minimally invasive Ivor Lewis and 61 patients who underwent a three-hole approach. The median overall survival was 13 months. We collected data on demographics, um, tumor characteristics, three preoperative risk stratifying systems, um, postoperative factors, and perioperative complications. With regards to our perioperative complications, these were graded on the Clavian Dindo scale. Um, minor complications we grouped as one and two, and then grades three through five we deemed major uh, complications. A grade three complication is something that requires a procedural intervention to deal with a complication. Grade, grade four is end-stage organ dysfunction, and grade five is death. Briefly on our surgical technique uh, for our McEwen, right vats with a mediastinal or uh, esophageal mobilization, and then the patient is supine for gastric conduit, um, gastric mobilization, and extracorporeal gastric uh, conduit creation, and then a linearly, linearly stapled uh, cervical anastomosis. For our Ivor Lewis approach, um, laparoscopic mobilization and gastric conduit creation followed by a right VATS with a circularly stapled um, anastomosis. Looking at some of our demographics, so uh, unsurprisingly there was a preponderance of male patients in both groups. There were, the majority of these patients underwent surgery for adenocarcinoma, although this is more heavily weighted towards the Ivor Lewis group. And then with regards to preoperative stage, um, there were significantly later stage tumors in our Ivor Lewis group. And although not clinically or statistically significant, there was a trend towards more of these patients undergoing neoadjuvant treatment as well. So these three risk stratifying systems, the Eastern Cooperative Oncology Group, ECOG score, um, looks at the effect a disease has on day-to-day -day life. The American Society for Anesthesiology Physical Status looks at fitness for the operating room. And Charleston Comorbidity Index uh, looks at 22 comorbid conditions and predicts one-year mortality. So we looked at all three of these. Um, we did find that 
the ASA scores were lower in the Ivor Lewis group. And although statistically significant, we don't, significant, we don't feel this is uh, clinically significant. Looking at some of our perioperative outcomes, length of stay was similar between groups and oncologic e efficacy was maintained. Um, you may notice that there were more uh, mean positive lymph nodes resected in the Ivor Lewis group. Um, we feel this is indicative of the higher staged patients uh, preoperatively. This graph looks at all grades of complications broken up by subtype. So the three whole groups are shown in yellow, Ivor Lewis in green. Um, none of these were statistically significant. Um, I think this graph just uh, can show a nice trend that some of the complications were lower in the Ivor Lewis group. Specifically, um, in terms of anastomotic leak, our three whole patients had a 6.6% leak rate compared to 2% in the Ivor Lewis group. And in terms of pulmonary and cardiac complications, these range from the mid-20s to mid-30s, and none of these were uh, statistically significant. Looking at severe complications, so grade three or higher, our overall, overall complication grade uh, greater than three was significantly lower in our Ivor Lewis group. Um, but severe complications, or severe anastomotic leaks uh, were not significant, neither were cardiac and pulmonary uh, complications. In terms of short-term um, outcomes, our 30-day mortality uh, was not statistically different. 30-day um, readmission rates were low. Median follow-up was significantly longer in the three-hole group. This is related to our changing of surgical technique over several years. And then we looked at severe complications at both 90 and 180 days, and uh, neither of these were statistically significant. So we feel that uh, our Ivor Lewis patients had significantly higher stage tumors at presentation. Um, they had similar rates of preoperative factors and risk stratifiers, uh, with the exception of the ASA score. Oncologic efficacy was maintained. And uh, minimally invasive Ivor Lewis esophagectomy had fewer overall serious complication compared to uh, a three-hole resection while maintaining similar rates of cardiac and pulmonary complications as, long, as well as anastomotic leaks. These data support the use of minimally invasive Ivor Lewis as possibly a less morbid operation for esophageal cancer. That being said, a McEwen resection maintains a satisfactory safety profile and should remain in the arsenal for esophageal cancer. Thank you. Yep, please go ahead. Identify yourself and yeah. yeah. Thank you for a nice presentation. Fal Helgesgus from Iraq. First question is: uh, Is it you do routinely uh, 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 pyloroplasty in Ivor Lewis first, and the second question is what is the caliber of circular stabler in anastomosis in, in Ivor Lewis? Sure, to your first question, um, in terms of pyloric emptying, we had previously been doing pyloroplasties, we currently use Botox, and could you repeat your second question? Sorry. Second question is the caliber of the circular stabler regarding Ivor Lewis anastomosis. Sure, we use a 29 EEA. Thank you. Hi, uh, Marco Patti from North Carolina. Nice presentation, thank you. I have uh, two questions. I noticed that you had conduit necrosis. So why do you think uh, that happened and how did you handle it? Sure, um, that particular patient, I, I believe there's only one conduit necrosis in each, uh, in each group. Uh, the patient in the three-hole group um, had had pretty significant um, response after neoadjuvant treatment, um, and we deemed that to a technical error, although the patient was sick preoperatively. In terms of the other one, the, in the Ivor Lewis group, it was just a technical error. How did you handle it? Sorry, could you repeat what that? Did you do? Uh, so that patient was managed with a uh, resection and left in discontinuity. Um, and is waiting to come back. Okay, thanks. Thank you for your excellent presentation. You have got a lot of experience with this. Now, if your patient comes to you, which one would you choose? Which approach? 
Sure. So when uh, clinically and oncologically appropriate, uh, I would offer an Ivor Lewis resection. Thank you.